Yes, I'm live now. It's Santu Sahu and you are watching Sahu's tutorial and I welcome all of you to my YouTube channel. So here I am again with the mock test for the upcoming MA set on English literature. This is day 10. Watch the video till the end because it is going to be a very fruitful session. And before starting the session, this is my humble request to all of you. Please do subscribe the channel and tap the bell icon to get more notification that I will upload in future and you will get the notification when I go live. So here uh, is the first question on your screen. Let's get into the video without wasting any time. So the first question is that the magnetic mountain is a poem by W. Sorden, Cecil Deleuze, Edward Thomas, Stephen Spender. So the magnetic mountain is a poem written by which writer here? And the right option is here Cecil de Lewis. Cecil de Lewis is the right option here. So B is right option over here. Okay. B. Moving at the question number two. No, let's look at this explanation here. The best of Cecil de Lewis political words and appeared uh, political words appeared in the magnetic mountain where more strongly under the influence of Orden, he adopts much of the latter's colloquialism and freedom of manner and elevates the normal vigor of his verse to the point of stridency. In this volume, we can see clearly his fondness for imagery drawn from machinery and similar aspects of modern life. He has also written a poem that is A Time to Dance, a day where Cecil de Lewis shows narrative powers of high order. And Cecil de Lewis is one of the uh, Orden group of poets. It is 1930s Orden group of poets. Moving ahead to the question number two, fills an anthology of verse. Wills, an anthology of verse, was published by Ezra Pound, F. R. Levis, Edith Sitwell, and T. S. Eliot. So, Wills, an anthology of verse, and this work was published by uh, Edith Sitwell and Osbert Sitwell. So, here C is right option here, Edith Sitwell. And here is the explanation. Uh, Wills, an anthology of verse, Edith Sitwell, Osbert Sitwell. Wills was primarily a vehicle for Edith uh, Sitwell, Osbert, Osbert uh, Sitwell, and Cecil Verrall. As it was entry into the modernist literary scene, and there was a modernism with visible roots in French decadent literature. Okay, moving at the question number three, which of the following works is not by Thomas Carroll? So the French Revolution was written by Thomas Carroll. Sartor Research Starts was also uh, written by Thomas Carroll, whereas Seven Pillars of Wisdom uh, was not written by Thomas Carroll, and this was written by T. E. T. E. Lawrence has written uh, Seven Pillars of uh, Wisdom. Seven Pillars of T. E. Lawrence has written T. E. Lawrence has written Seven Pillars of Wisdom and the Life of Slug was also written by Thomas Carroll. So here C is the right option which is not by Thomas Carroll. Seven Pillars of Wisdom is not written by Thomas Carroll and it was written by T. E. Lawrence. Seven Pillars of Wisdom is the autobiographical account of the experience of the British Army Colonel that is T. Uh, T. E. Lawrence while serving as a military advisor to Vedian forces during the Arab revolt against the Ottoman Empire of 1916 to 1918 and it was completed in February 1922 but first published in December 1926. The title Nightingale of India was given to Sarojini Naidu by Gandhiji Nehruji Tagore Arbind Ghosh. So the Nightingale of India, the title was given to Sarojini Naidu and it was given by Gandhiji. So A is right option. Gandhiji gave uh, Sarojini Naidu the title called Nightingale of India. Next question, the long poem, The Dynast, is written by the great novelist Charles Dickens, Snow, George Meredith, no, Thomas Hardy, D. H. Lawrence. So the long poem, The Dynast, is written by the great novelist Thomas Hardy. Thomas Hardy has written The Dynast, the uh, long poem. There is the explanation here. The Dynast is an English language closed drama. It was written in verse as well as in prose by Thomas Hardy. And Hardy himself described this work as an epic drama of the war with Napoleon in three parts, 19 acts and 130 scenes. And the verse is primarily iambic pentameter, occasionally tetrameter has been used, often with rhymes. And three parts were published in 1904, 1906, 1908. Moving on to the question number six. For them, no more the blazing heart shall burn. To whom does them refer to? To whom does them refer to? Bards killed by William the second? No. Poor rustic people who are now dead, ambitious people or politicians. So these lines actually appear in elegy written in a country churchyard. Elegy written in a country churchyard in this poem, this line appear 
and then refers to poor rustic people who are now dead. So B is right option over here. And L is written in a country charge yet no more shall rouse them from their lowly bed. For them no more the blazing hat, blazing hearth shall burn or busy housewife ply her evening care. So grace uh, L is written on a country charge yet. He passed the flaming bounds of place and time. This has been said about Milton. He passed the flaming bounds of place and time. This has been said about Milton uh, by Ben Johnson, Alexander Pope, Gray or Blake. So he passed the flaming bounds of place and time. It, was, it has been said about Milton by Gray. Gray has said this lines about Milton. And here is the explanation that in progress of poesy, originally called Ode in the Greek style, having traced the progress of poetry from Greece to Italy and to Shakespeare in England, Gray refers in the second stanza of part 3 to John Milton and to his pride of poetry in Paradise Lost. Gray considers him, that is, he, uh, that is John Milton, almost on par with Shakespeare. And since he wrote, a heaven and, uh, wrote of heaven and hell and of times past and future, Gray declares that Milton was not limited in his choice of themes by place or time. So this, this uh, it is because of the versatility, versatility of Milton uh, here. Uh, Gray has said that nor second he that wrote sublime after upon the seraph wings of ecstasy, the secrets of the abyssy, uh, abysses to spy. He passed the flaming bounds of place and time, the living throne, the sapphire blaze where angels tremble while they cage he saw. So these are the lines uh, written by here uh, in progress of poesy by Gray. The name that is uh, of Dylan Thomas posthumously published play and Dillis, uh, that is uh, Dylan Thomas was died in the year 1953 and uh, the, uh, the work is, the work that I am referring here is uh, was published in the year 1954. So, the ascent of F6, the lady is not for burning, or the tower, or under the mill coot. So, here the right option is uh, under the mill coot. Under the mill coot was published in the year 1954. So, this is the posthumously published work under the mill coot. Moving at the question number, uh, uh, and this is actually her radio drama under the mill, under mill coot is a 1954 radio drama by Welsh poet Dylan Thomas commissioned by BBC and later adapted for the stage. Next question. About which poem of Milton has Dr. Johnson remarked that diction is harsh, the rhymes uncertain, the numbers unpleasing. So everybody has praised uh, Lycidas. That is, uh, I, I told the answer here, commas. So the options are commas, Lycidas, El Allegro, or Paradise Lost. So here Dr. Johnson remarked uh, Lycidas uh, Lycidas diction is as harsh, the rhymes uncertain and the numbers unpleasing. So, Lycidas, uh, so here Lycidas is right option over here. In lives of the poets, Dr. So in which uh, work Dutch Samuel Johnson had says uh, that in one of the poems on his uh, on which much praise has been bestowed is Lycidas, of which the diction is harsh, the rhymes uncertain and the numbers unpleasing. But beauty there is, we must therefore seek in the sentiments and image. Next question. Coldridge Biography, literary, this is autobiographical one, was published in 1798, 1800, 1817, 1805. So, biography literary was published in 1817. So, C is right option over here. Moving on to the question number 11. Dash is called the father of imagism, imagism in English poetry. The father of imagism in English poetry is called, uh, who is called? Ezra Pound, T.S. Eliot, Oswald Sitwell, T. E. Hume. So, T. E. Hume is called the father of imagism in English poetry. So, the right option here, D. D is the right option. Next question. Uh, Vienna is a dash by Stephen Spender. Stephen Spender is also belongs to that modern group of poetry, 1930s group of poetry here. Uh, uh, poem, uh, poet, a uh, play, poem, novel, essay. So, Vienna is a poem by Stephen Spender. So, uh, B is the right option where B. She cannot fade, though thou hast not the bliss, for ever will thou love, she be fair. So, the above lines have been taken from which work? The C cannot fade, though thou has not bliss, for ever will thou love and this and, and C be fair. These lines are from Kids Ode to Nightingale, Thing of Beauty, La Bella Dam Sans Mercy, or Ode on a Grecian Art. 
So this line watch this line so I have been taken from old on a CNR. So D is right option over here. Moving at the question of 14 withdrawal from withdrawal from an uncongenial world of escape either to death or more often to an ideal dream of world is a theme of Tennyson's work. Ulysses no. The Palace of Arts no. Lotus eaters none of these. So withdrawal from an uncongenial uncongenial world of escape either to date or more often to an ideal dream world uh, and this is the theme of Tennyson's Lotus eaters. So C is right option over C. Philip Wakeen, Aunt Palette and Tom Tulliver are, are the characters of John Ciliot's novel Silas uh, Silas Murner, Adam Beath, Middle Merch or the Meal on the Floors. So you know that Tom Tulliver and Maggie Tulliver appear in the work that is the meal on the floors. So D is right option over here. Philip Wakeen and Aunt Palette and Tom Tulliver are characters from George Eliot's novel The Meal on the Floors. And here is the explanation. Spanning a period of 10 to 15 years, the novel details the lives of Tom and Maggie uh, Tulliver, who are siblings who uh, grow up at Dorcott Mill on the river floors. And the mill is at the junction of the river floors and the more minor river ripple near the village of St. Ox, Lincolnshire, England. Both the rivers and the village are fictional. The novel begins in the late 1820s or early 1830s. Several historical references place uh, the events in the book after the Napoleonic Wars, but before the Reform Act of 1832. Next question. In all things, in all natures, in the stars, this active principle abides. What aspects of Artsworth, Artsworth do we find in these lines? So, in all things, in all natures, in the stars, this active principle abides. So, these lines actually speaking about the spiritualization of nature, the universalization of nature, or the greatness of human nature. So, these lines actually are uh, these aspects. Uh, what what aspects of words what do we find? So, the aspects here is the spiritualization of nature. So these lines actually referring the spiritualization of nature. Next question. Matthew Arnold said, and Matthew Arnold said, Matthew Arnold said. An ineffectual angel, an ineffectual angel beating in the void, his luminous wings in vain. About kids, no. Byron, no. Sally Blake. Matthew Arnold has said this line about Sally. On Sally, Sally is the adoption over here. Next question. For whom it is said, sensuousness is a paramount bias of his genius. Sensuousness is a paramount bias of his genius. Blake kids tennis and Sally. so it was told about kids so for whom it was it, it was uh, for kids kids is the right option the glorious mirror where the almighty is almighty is almighty is from glasses itself in tempest the above line occur in byron's which war the glorious mirror where the almighty is from glasses itself in tempest the above line occurred in Byron's fame, Waterloo, a roll on thou deep and dark blue oceans, or Don Juan. So here, uh, these lines appear in roll on thou deep and dark blue ocean. So C is the right option. Dickens gives a, tra a tragic picture of the French Revolution in his novel. Little Dorriet, so Dickens has given uh, a tragic picture of French Revolution in his novel, Little Dorriet, Hard Times, Bleak House, A Tale of Two Cities. So Dickens has given the, uh, the the realistic pictures of French revolutions, a tragic picture of the French revolution in his novel, that is D, that is a tale of two cities, in a tale of two cities. Next question. Love of political freedom, always the novelist of Byron's passion, inspired him to write Manfred the Island, the Prisoner of Chilean, or the Prophecy of Dante. So the love of political freedom, always the novelist of Byron's passion, inspired him to write the prisoner of Chile. So here C is the right option. C. Now the Rape of the Law is written in blank words, quatrains, pencil and stanza, heroic couplet. Rape of the Law is written in heroic couplet and it was published in three volumes. In the first volume appeared in 1712, the second volume appeared in 1714 and the third volume appeared in 1700, uh, 1717. And the first volume appeared with two candles. In two cantos, the first volume appeared in the year 1714, whereas 1700, uh, 1712, whereas 1714, in 1714, there uh, with, it was published with along with five cantos. It was published along with five cantos, and in 1717, it published with five cantos, and there Clarissa's speech was included. Clarissa's uh, Clarissa's speech was uh, included. 
was Clarissa's speech was included in 1717 edition and it was written in heroic couplet. An aesthetic delight in art and a streak of extreme statistic cruelty can be observed in the Browning's poem, Paracelsus, My Large Duchess, Sordello, Pippa Passes. So an aesthetic delight in art and a streak of extreme statistic poetry cruelty can be observed in Browning's Pippa Passes. So here D is right option. Going to the, uh, and Pippa Passes is a verse drama actually by Robert Browning. It was published in uh, 1841. As the first volume of his Bales and Pomegranate series. So it was published in his Bales and Pomegranate series. That is Pippa Passes. Pippa actually name of a girl. It is a verse drama written by Robert Browning. And it was dedicated most admiringly to the author of Ion. That is Thomas Noon. And it is best known for the lines like God is in his heaven and all is right with the world. God is in his heaven. All is right with the world. This is the famous line of this work. That is Pippa Passes written by Robert Browning and it is a verse drama. Edward Fitzgerald's The Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam. The Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam inspired Browning to write which work? The last write together, Rabbi Ben Ezra, Esther, the, sorry, Apt Vogler. So here, Edward Fitzgerald's The Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam has inspired Browning to write Rabbi Ben Ezra. So B is right option here. Rabbi Ben Ezra. Rabbi Ben is the right option here. Okay. And this poem begins with Grow old along with me. The best is yet to be. So this is the opening line of the poem called Rabbi Ben Ezra. This is Grow old along with me. The best is yet to be. And it was that uh, Edward Fitzgerald's The Rubaiyat uh, Rube of Omar Khayyam has inspired Robert uh, uh, is Browning to write this work. This is Rabbi Ben Ezra. The Crown of Wild Olive was written by Huxley, Ben Johnson, Ruskin, none of these. The Crown of Wild Olive was written by John Ruskin. John Ruskin has written The Crown of Wild Olive. And The Crown of Wild Olive is a commentary on the socio-economic conditions of the society. And here, by representing this, he is not only playing the role of a satirist, rather he is also uh, playing a role of preacher as well as a social reformer. Okay. A long poem is a combination of short poem. Who was who has held the above opinion? Cold rich kids, what's what? None of this. So a long poem is a combination of short poems, and it was held. Uh, it was told by what's what? What's what has told these lines? Next question on heroes and hero worship and the heroic in history was written by Ruskin, Thomas Carroll, J. S. Mill. None of this. So on heroes and hero worship and the heroic in history. This work was written by Thomas Carroll. So here B is right option. Yeah? Thomas Carroll has written on heroes and hero worship on the heroic in history. So here B is right option here. Yeah? Here is the explanation on heroes and hero worship and the heroic in history. The book by Scottish essayist, historian and philosopher Thomas Carroll. And published by, it was published by James Frederick. James Frederick published. And it is a collection of six lectures given in May 1840 about the prominent historical figures. And it lays out Carroll's belief in the importance of heroic leadership. We have the question number 28. Which poem of Tennyson was particularly liked by Queen Victoria? So, which poem did Queen Victoria like particularly? The Idols of the Kings, Charge of the Light Brigade, In Memoriam, none of these. So, Queen Victoria has liked In Memoriam, Tennyson's In Memoriam particularly. So, yes, C is right option. Next question. Where ignorance is bliss, it is folly to be wise. This line belongs to Grace poem. The bird, the progress of poesy, elegy written in a country churchyard, or oat, on a distant prospect of Eton College. Where ignorance says bliss, it is folly to be wise. This line actually belongs to Grace poem. And this line uh, appears in the work that is owed on a distant prospect of Eton College. So here D is right option. Moving on to the question number 30. Who knows but the world may end tonight? Who knows but the world may end tonight? In which of Browning's poem the above line appears? The last try together, one word more. The My last touch is, uh, the last touch is, or oh, none of these. So here yeah, the right option is who knows but the world may end tonight. These lines appear in the last right together. So here yes, A is the right option A. And here is the explanation. This is an excerpt from the last right together. A dramatic monologue by Robert Browning. The lady rejects her lover. However, she has consented to accompany him one last time. And the thought of going on one more journey with his girlfriend makes the lover happy. Next question. Dash is any custom or tradition, usually a choice of phrasing or even a single word that distinguishes or differentiates one group of people from another. So, dash is any custom or tradition, usually choice of phrasing or even a single word 
that differentiates or distinguishes a group of people from another group of people. Your options are sibilate, accidents, occurrence, flexing. So here the right option is sibilate. A is right option over here. Coming back to question number 32. God's eternal laws are kind and break the heart of stone. But God's eternal laws are kind and break the heart of stone. In which poem do these lines appear? The options are We Are Seven, Ballad of Reading Gold by Oscar Wilde, or We Are Seven by Wordsworth, Prisoner of Chilon by Byron, none of these. And the right option here is Ballad of Reading Gold by Oscar Wilde. In that poem, But God's eternal laws are kind and break the heart of stone appear. Moving on to the question number 33. Which of the following locations in Elizabeth Gaskell's novel? That is wives and daughters. So this is a novel written by Elizabeth Gaskell. Wives and daughters act as a representative of many English country towns with old, uh, but this is fading aristocracies. With old, but uh, the, the but fading aristocracies. Your options are Camnor Towers, Camnor Towers, Gibson Home, Hollingford, Hollingford, or Hamley Hall. So here uh, the right option is Hollingford. C is right option here. Hollingford. Moving add to this explanation here that wives and daughters and everyday story is a novel by Elizabeth Gaskell and the novel chronicles the maturations of Molly Gibson. Molly Gibson are sincere young women. Here, Hollingford, an English provincial town that provides the main setting in which country life and her central figures interact as their stories unfold. And Hollingford is a is representative of many English country towns with old but fading aristocracies. Its leading citizens are the Count and the Countess Count. Hollingford is rather dull and slow paced place in which the place of women is in the home, doing needlework or, or reading pretty books and novels. Unlike the Countess, not all Hollingford people can go to London or other cosmopolitan centers for a change of air or season. Hollingford is a small community of country folks with a few exceptions which cause for much talk, anticipation and great preparation is an event at Camelot Towers or an occasional ball. Moving at the question number 34. Which of the following is not part of Anthony Trollope's Chronicles of Barsetshire, a series of six novels set in the fictional English county of Barsetshire and it is a cathedral town of Barchester. The warden, Dr. Thorne, family personage, Phineas Finn. So here, the right option is Phineas Finn. And these three also are part of Chronicles of Barset Sir. That is the warden, the Dr. Thun, and family personas. These three are part of Anthony Trollope's Chronicles of Barset Sir. Whereas Finnes Finn uh, does not belong to the category. And it is actually the second of the Palisar series of novels. That is Finnes Finn is the second of the Palisar series of novels by Anthony Trollope. Okay. Next question. What is the first chapter of Lewis Carroll's nonsensical novel Alice? Adventure in Wonderland. So Alice Adventures in Wonderland is a nonsensical novel. Now you will have to say uh, the first chapter of the novel, the nonsens nonsensical novel, Alice, Wonder Alice Adventures in Wonderland. Your options are down the uh, down the habit, down the habit hole, the pool of tears, advice from a caterpillar, a matty party. So the right option is here, down the rabbit hole. Down the rabbit hole is the first part of the Alice Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll's. Next question. This Putin Brass is a character of the play Othello, Hamlet, King Lear, none of these. So Putin Brass is a character of the play Hamlet. In Hamlet, the character Putin Brass appear. Which comedies are called comedies of mask? Ben Johnson's, Barnard Saw's, Shakespeare, none of these. So the comedies of Barnard Saw's are called uh, comedies of mask. So B is the adoption here. Next question. In the game, is a one act play. The one act play uh, is a one act play. Absurdist player. End game is written by Hemingway, Somerset Bomb, Beckett, none of this. So end game is a one act play written by Samuel Beckett. C is that option here. And you will see that end game by Samuel Beckett is an absurdist, tragic, uh, tragic comic one act play about a blind, paralyzed, dominating elderly man. And uh, you know that this work was written in French originally. And Samuel Beckett himself has translated this. Uh, French work into English. So he himself has translated the French work end game into English. He himself has translated. It was originally written in, at first in French and then he translated it into English by uh, by himself. Okay. Next question. Pleasant, pleasant pan. Uh, pleasant pan is an example of metaphor paradox oxymoron. So it is an example of oxymoron. 
oxymoron and what is oxymoron it is the conjunction of two words with two conjunction of two words with meanings that contradict each other and some examples are awfully good bitter sweet same difference original copy are few oxymoron examples whereas paradox is the opposition of ideas opposition of ideas and here oxymoron is conjunction of two words with meanings that contradict each other whereas paradox is the opposition of ideas or themes themes and here some examples of paradox is save money by spending it say if i know one thing it is that i know nothing this is the beginning of the end deep down you are really shallow i am a compulsive liar men work together where they work together or apart so this was line next by robert, robert first okay my fair lady is a cinematic version of pygmalion candida getting married none of them my fair lady is a cinematic version of pygmalion so here a is right option next question who said the true opposite of poetry is not prose but science the true opposite of poetry is not prose but science what's what t s elliot coldridge none of this so it was told by coldridge coldridge has said that the true opposite of poetry is not prose but science so here c is right option fast in the beauty to be fast in the might the fast in the beauty should be fast in the night is the line spoken in hyperion by whom so this line was spoken in hyperion and and which character of hyperion has said this lines your options are oceanus hyperion apelu none of these so it was uh, told by hyperion hyperion himself has told this lines arnest d selin code is the editor of prometheus unbound the prelude songs of innocence and experience none of these so arnest d selin code is the editor of prelude the autobiographical poem the spiritual growth of the poem a uh, poet the prelude so prelude's editor is arnest d selin code next question hebrew melodies hebrew melodies is written by tennyson's byron keats none of these so hebrew melodies uh, what and it is written by byron byron has written these and hebrew melodies is a collection of 30 poems by lord byron and they were largely created by byron to accompany music composed by isaac nathan who played the poet melodies which he claimed incorrectly dated back to the service of the temple in jerusalem next question a little girl lost is, a, is written by wordsworth blake kids none of these a little girl lost is a poem written by william blake so b is right option moving at the question number 46 the child is the father of man and for the first time this lines appear in which work of wordsworth immortality ot no the prelude no my heart leaps when i behold rainbow in the sky or none of these so the for the first time this line appeared in my heart leaps when i behold a rainbow in the sky that is the child is the father of a man and william wordsworth used the expression for the first time the child is the father of the man in his famous 1802 poem 1802 poem that is my heart leaps up also known as the rainbow next question lady windmere's pen lady wind uh, wind uh, windmere's pen is written by oscar wilde gal sorti t s eliot none of these so yeah lady windmere's pen is written by oscar wilde oscar wilde has written lady, lady windmere's pen and it is actually a horror comedy windmere's pen a play about a good woman is four act comedy by oscar wilde and was first performed on saturday 20 february 1892 at the st james theater in london and the story concerns the lady windmere who suspects that her husband is having an affair with another woman and she confronts him with it although he denies it he invites the other woman mrs erlin to his wife's birthday ball moving at the question number 48 the only play by shakespeare which conforms to the classical unities is hamlet twelfth night romeo and juliet none of these so the only play by shakespeare which conforms to the classical unities is here twelfth night so twelfth night abides by the classical unities So here A uh, B is the right option here. Twelve Night is the only play by written by Shakespeare that uh, that, uh, that 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 is abide uh, that abides the uh, or confirms the classical unities. Okay. Yahoo in Gulliver's Travels, according to Gulliver, where European Indians, America, America none of these. So Yahoo is according to the Gulliver, according to Gulliver, or Gulliver where European. So here A is right option. Moving on to the next question, Maggie. Maggie Gulliver is the central character in George Eliot's novel. Adam Beat. middle march no the mill and the flows or silas mariner no so here uh, maggie is the central character in george eliot's work that is the maggie tulliver and tom tulliver they the siblings they appear in the novel the mill and the flows c is right option here
Next question, Stephen Guest is an important character in one of the following novels of George Eliot, The Mill and the Flows, Adam Beat, Cyrus Mandan, and all of this. Stephen Guest is also an important character in The Mill and the Flows. So here A is the adoption, The Mill and the Flows. Stephen is a handsome, charming, and wealthy son of a son and the hire to the guest and co uh, shopping fortune, and he is quoting Lucy Dean. It is generally understood that they will soon be engaged. Stephen feels genuine affection and love for Lucy, whom he considers the ideal wife for him. Moving on to question number 52. How can we know that dancer? How can we know the dancer from the dance? This line written by kids is taken from Selim to by Jintia, among school children, the second coming, none of these. So how can we know the dancer from the dance? And this is the ending line of the poem. This is the concluding line of a poem. You have to identify the poem written by uh, W.B. Eats, who got the Nobel Prize in the year 1923. Your options are selling to Byzantium among school children, the second coming, none of these. So this line, that is how can we know the dancer from the dance? These lines, the concluding line, appear in among school children. And uh, you know that Eats had received the prestigious Nobel Prize in the year 1923. So here B is the right option here. In William Butler Eats' poem, Among School Children, the most famously asked, how can we know the dancer from the dance? Many interpret this line as an observation that calm creative acts are so, in, so intimately connected to the artist who created them that separating uh, the two is almost impossible. And this is the, uh, this book that is Among School Children contains eight sections and in the eight section there is the last line here, how can we know the dancer from the dance? So it is a, uh, it is a, it is a line, these lines are from Among School Children written by William Butler Eats. Hamlet was killed by Polonius in which act? So Hamlet actually Hamlet was uh, killed in Act Five. In Act Five, Hamlet was killed and seen and seen two. Hamlet was killed uh, in Act Five, seen two. So who killed Hamlet? Polonius? No. That is Laetius or Claudius. So we have the right option is B. The Laetius has killed uh, Hamlet in Act Five, seen two. Actually, in Act Five, seen two, Hamlet finally completes his promise to his father and kills Claudius. And by this point, his mother has died and let us has admitted the sword he has cut Hamlet with is also been poisoned. And Hamlet's death therefore is imminent. And Hamlet stabs Claudius and pours the poison while down his throat. Next question. Who, pre who, who represents prejudice in Jane Austen's novel Pride and Prejudice? So, and you know the first title of Pride and Prejudice was First Impression. Pride and Prejudice first title was uh, First Impression. Pride and Prejudice, first title was First Impression. And who represents prejudice or uh, prejudice in Jane Austen's novel Pride and Prejudice? Here, yeah, prejudice, repre prejudice is represented by the character Elizabeth. Miss Elizabeth represents prejudice, whereas the um, Mr. Darcy represents the pride. Mr. Darcy represents pride and Miss Elizabeth represents prejudice. Okay, moving on to the question number 55 here. The uh, Character of Abel Magwitch, the character of Abel, Abel Magwitch appears in which of the following Charles Dickens novel? Uh, Great Expectations, Oliver Twist, Nicholas Nickel by Bleak House. So, you know that Abel Magwitch is the real benefactor, the real benefactor of Peep, uh, that is Philip Piri. Philip Piri is known as Peep in the novel, that is called Great Expectations, and it is a building Suman novel, in the, or it is a coming of age novel, that is building Suman novel, and Abel Magwitch is the uh, the, the the real benefactor of the character Philip Philip, and where you will uh, see the characters like Compison is the another, Compison is the another convict, Abel Magwis and Compison they are the convict, and characters like Estella, Miss Havisham or Leek appears, Joe appears in that uh, novel Great Expeditions, and then and the and the name of the house of um, that is uh, Miss Havisham is Satie's house, it is Satie's house, in Satie's house. In Satie's house, Miss Havisham resides there. And Estella is adopted by him, by her. Estella, the character Estella. Okay. Question number 56 here. Uh, what was the subtitle of William X. Thackeray's novel, Vanity Fair, when it was published as a single volume in 1848? Very easy. A novel without a hero. So, it's the right option. A novel without a hero, Vanity Fair's subtitle, written by William X. Thackeray. Next question. Uh, the Old Familiar Faces. The Old Familiar Faces was written by Ruskin, Charles Lamb, uh, J.S. Mill, None of the the old familiar faces was written by uh, Charles Lamb. Charles Lamb has written the old familiar faces. Which poem of kids contains hard melodies are sweet, but but those unheard are sweeter. Which poem of kids uh, contains hard melodies are sweet, but those unheard are sweeter. Ode to autumn, ode on a Grecian, and ode to melancholy. None of these. 
so these lines appear in the poem called Port on a Christian Heart. 58 and B right answer. Next question, which novel of Hardy presents Egdon Heath? Presents Egdon Heath as the background of the story. Tales of the Dear Babylons and its subtitle is a pure woman. Tales of the Dear Babylons subtitle is a pure woman. Uh, Return of the Native, Jude the Obscure, none of these. So Hardy presents Egdon Heath as the background of the story in the novel called Return of the Native. So here B is right option here. Okay. Question number 16. Wait a minute, it is not starting. Yeah. Yeah. Question number 16. It is for the world to decide whether you are a poet or not. For whom these words are meant. It is for the world to decide whether you are a poet or not. For whom these words are meant. For whom these words are meant. For first Pope, Byron, none of these. So these lines are uh, work for first, but first. So to win up the session, here is question number 61. Today's last question. 61. I have suffered with those that I saw suffering. I have suffered with those that I saw suffering. These humanistic words are attributed to Miranda in the Tempest, Orsia in the Merchant of Venice, Lady Macbeth in Macbeth, none of these. So, these lines uh, were spoken by Miranda in the Tempest. So, A is right option here. So, thank you. These were all 61 questions I have discussed along with explanation. And if you want me to make video on any particular topic, you can write me down in the comment box. You can suggest me. I will definitely try to make video on those topic. Thank you once again for watching the video. And this is my humble request to all of you. Please do subscribe and tap the bell icon to get more notification. And you will get the notification when I go.